Anne of Cleves House, Lewis, East Sussex. The house is a 15th century timber framed Wealdon Hall house, which has been much renovated over the centuries. It gains its name because it was part of the annulment settlement between Queen Anne of Cleves and King Henry VIII, who were married briefly in 1541. It isn't thought she ever visited the property. However, she was hands-on with the running of many of her other properties, so she may have visited briefly to oversee operations and to make sure it was still making her money, which was the objective of the many various locations she owned. Much of what stands today does indeed date back to the 15th century. However, it is believed that certain parts may date back slightly earlier, perhaps as far back as the 13th or even the 12th century. On the 14th of May 1264, much of Lewis was burned to the ground as a result of the nearby battle fought between Simon de Montfort with a group of allied barons against the royalist forces of King Henry III and his son Prince Edward. The battle started well for the Royalists. Prince Edward routed part of the Barodian army with a large cavalry charge. However, his impetuous charge left his father exposed, and the Baronial infantry soon got the upper hand against King Henry's forces. The Royalist forces fled back to the castle and priory in Lewis itself, and the king was forced to sign the Mise of Lewis, ceding many of his powers to de Montfort. The building now known as Anne of Cleves House actually belonged to the priory. At this time, and indeed for much of its life, it was a hostelry for travellers and visitors to the priory, with many a pilgrim stopping a night and supping on some basic pottage. The role of the building somewhat changed after the Reformation. This was King Henry VIII's break with the Catholic faith when he married Anne Boleyn against the Pope's wishes. As a direct result, he also now earned many ex-church properties, including what we now call Anne of Cleves House. An early Tudor resident was John Saxby, who lived there with his wife and children, and it is down to him and his family that we now have what is known as a parlour. Prior to the Tudor period, every room was devoted to work in some way or another. At the height of the building's use as a hostelry, the upstairs area would have been where the bedrooms were. Today the visitor is confronted with the open framework, the wooden beams and trusses, which have kept the building in its shape over the centuries. Long ago, however, the visitor would have been confronted with a very different sight. There would have been three main bedrooms, one for the owners and separate rooms for various visitors. You would have had a room, but not to yourself. You would also have a bed, and again, not to yourself. You could go to bed on the night and wake up next to a complete stranger. This, however, was the norm, and wasn't as irregular as it sounds today. Also to the modern visitor in the upstairs area, there is a bell. This bell was once, like many bells, attached outside of a church. These were fire alarms used long ago. Another highlight of the museum today is its almost ancient-looking kitchen. It is, in fact, what was once termed a fitted kitchen. Within the kitchen at Anne of Cleves House is a very strange object. It is a stone table, hexagonal in shape, and is said to come from nearby Malden Hall. It has a strange story attached to it, and revolves around the murder of Thomas Beckett, Archbishop of Canterbury. It is believed the knights who murdered the Archbishop travelled to Malden Hall on their way to France which to me is slightly strange, as they killed him in Canterbury, which isn't far from Dover. However, legend has it that the knights did indeed come to Lewis. Upon entering Malden Hall, they gave their weapons, the ones which had butchered Thomas Beckett, to a lowly squire, who placed them on the table. They left the weapons and went to get something to eat. They hadn't got far before they heard a, a loud clatter of steel on stone. They came back to the room with the table and found their weapons upon the floor. The squire apologised and placed them back on the table. Again the knight went to get something to eat. And again they hadn't got far before they heard the same clatter. They returned to the room and found their weapons once more upon the floor. Again they tried to place their weapons on the table and go and get something to eat. And again the same clatter, the same commotion and the same result. Their weapons on the floor. The legend has stuck with the table. However, the table, seemingly, could never stick with Malden Hall, which was closed down long ago, and the table coming a short distance to Anne of Cleves' house.